Hey everyone, this is a part two of the microorganisms. Now this is where we stopped last time, question three. I'm gonna have two more questions from part one. So let's see if you can answer those questions correctly because this will be a test to see how much you remember from part one. Question four. The genetic material of a viruses is either DNA or RNA. So some viruses have DNA other, and others have RNA. So the correct answer is D. And for all the other living organisms, right, from bacteria to fungi to protozoans to plants to animals to humans, we all have DNA. But viruses are a little bit special. They could have RNA as their genetic material. Okay, next question. Influenza is caused by which of the following microorganisms? The correct answer is a virus. All right, next we're gonna talk about infectious versus non-infectious diseases. Infectious diseases, based on the name, uh, are diseases that can spread from one person to another. Now we're talking about humans, right? Transmission between humans, but be sure to know that there are diseases that can kind of jump from animals to humans, right? For example, HIV um, or SARS or COVID-19. Those viruses originated in animals and uh, and humans got exposed, and it just happened that those viruses do have the ability to infect human cells. So the infection leads to the disease. Now, infectious diseases are also known as communicable diseases. And in fact, you know, a lot of the government agencies, they will have this communicable disease uh, kind of office or bureau in public health and uh, human services department. So they specialize in infectious diseases, basically. Now, there are some common infectious diseases, for example, cholera, that you need to know. It's a pretty common bacteria uh, disease. And normally the bacteria can contaminate the water, right? And if uh, a human drinks the water, uh, the human could get infected and starts to show all the symptoms and mostly the GI tract symptoms. Chickenpox, that's another very famous one, and that's a viral disease. It's caused by a virus. And COVID-19, that's what we're very familiar with. Non-infectious diseases do not spread from one another. The disease stays within the person that has contracted the disease. For example, most of the cancers uh, in October, well known, that's the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, right? And then we can um, we can have contact with people with breast cancer because it's not an infectious disease, right? It's not going to uh, transmit from one person to another. Uh, that's most of the cancers, but there are certain cancers that can be infectious. So, for example, cervical cancer. Cervical cancers can be caused by a virus, the human papilloma virus. So what could cause the infection? Sexual activities, sexual contact can uh, transmit the virus from one person to another and the, the infection uh, will lead to cervical cancer. But there are vaccines that can protect a person from the uh, HPV and protect, from, from, and protect the person from getting cervical cancer. Diabetes, well known, that's not really infectious, right? Arthritis, that's another common non-infectious disease, asthma. Okay, how do infectious diseases spread? Um, a lot of these are common sense, right? So you don't you really need to memorize that much. Just use, you know, what you have already know to kind of help you remember uh, how these diseases can spread. I think after 
uh, going through the pandemic for a couple of years, we are all very well aware of all the ways that viruses and other microorganisms can spread. Direct contact, that's a major way for a, a disease to spread. Uh, for example, skin-to-skin -skin contact, right? sexual contact, and sometimes just really by touching a common surface, right? The CDC website, uh, they have a web page on infectious disease, and they talk about how a healthcare provider uh, could, you know, touch a contaminated surface, for example, from uh, contaminated medical equipment, right? And then get uh, the pathogens on their hands. And if it, they don't clean their hands, they could transmit the pathogens to the patients. So that's something that, you know, everybody working in healthcare should be aware of. So they need to, you know, be sure to clean their hands. Contact with the body fluid, for example, blood and saliva, that's another way for diseases to spread. For example, HIV, right, can be spread by contact with someone's blood. Droplets in the air or aerosols in the air, right? With the COVID-19, we are all very alert about what's in the air. So droplets can travel up to six feet, which is why we have that six feet social distance. But some of the aerosols with, uh, you know, pathogens on the surface could travel a lot farther. So that's um, usually uh, inhaled by healthy people and that's how they get exposed. Animal vectors, we have a lot of insects can, that can transmit infectious diseases, right? Mosquito is definitely the number one insect, um, number one host for a lot of the viruses or protozoan parasites, for example, malaria. And Zika, if you guys remember a few years back, Zika is a big thing, uh, especially in South America. So that's all the major ways that infectious diseases can spread among humans. Okay, practice question. Which of the following is not a communicable disease? To answer this question, you have to know what communicable disease is, right? Basically, it means an infectious disease. So which one is not infectious? That's stroke, right? And everything else is infectious. So let's talk about the type of microorganism that causes the disease. COVID-19, virus. Hepatitis, that's also virus. Measles, virus, athlete's foot, do you guys remember? This is a special one, right? It's caused by fungus. Okay, all right, hopefully uh, you will see some of those on T's test. Okay, the last topic for this lesson is microscopes. Now, it looks like there is a lot to know, but just in terms of what kind of questions that ATI can ask, I think it really, it's kind of limited to just a few main questions. Okay. Now, first you need to know that microscopes are the equipment that we use to study microorganisms, right? Because with our naked eye, those organisms are too small to see. So we developed microscopes, which can really magnify the organism or a specimen and provide a really, really great resolution. So there are two main types of microscopes, light microscope, and electron microscope. Now, there are some big differences between those two types of microscopes. And remember, the light microscopes have a lower magnification and lower resolution than electron microscopes. So I'll give you some specific examples so that you can see, you know, those two types of microscopes um, are really designed to look at different things. So with a light microscope, we can see the general structure of a cell. But with electron microscopes, we can see the specific structure of a cell organelle inside a cell or a virus. Right? Think about how small viruses are right? compared to cells. Viruses can 
in fact, a cell, right? So they are much, much smaller than a cell. So I think ATI can probably ask two types of questions, you know, in terms of the, the two types of microscopes. They could just give you a general statement saying that, you know, if we want to achieve the greatest, the greatest magnification and the resolution, would you use a light microscope or an electron microscope? So that's like a general statement type of question. Or they can give you specific examples. Like um, if you want to study cell organelles or viruses, extremely small structures, would you use a light microscopes or electron microscopes? So the answer would be electron microscopes. All right, now light microscope relies on the light source to illuminate the field so that you can see all the structures. There are six types of light microscopes, and I really didn't expect ATI to list all six types. Most people would not use most of those uh, light microscopes. Even for me, I went to graduate school, I have only used a bright field microscope. That's very common in a common biology lab. And if you have taken a biology class or AMP class or you know even microbiology class, that's the microscope that you have used. Now I have also used a fluorescence microscope to study tissues, but you see I've only used a two out of six. So what's the use? What's the purpose for listing all of them? So I would say do not memorize the names. You do not need that. The only thing you, you need to do, I believe, is just to kind of be familiar with those terms, with those names, so that when you see one, you know, okay, this is, this is a type of a light microscope. So if you have, you know, two choices, say face contrast microscope and electron microscope, then you know which one has a better magnification and resolution, right? Definitely electron microscope, because you know this is a light microscope and it's not as good as, a, uh, as an electron microscope. Okay, now talking about electron microscopes, ooh, they have a really great magnification uh, up to 150,000 times, right? So think about a little uh, cell organelle, say mitochondrion, that can be magnified that many times, right? So it can become really visible, really clear under the microscope. But there are some drawbacks about using electron microscopes. You cannot view live cells under the, micro, under the uh, electron microscope because these types of scopes use a vacuum. There will be electrons, right, coming out um, and going through the uh, surface of the specimen or really going through uh, the specimen. So with that vacuum, you cannot have any living cells. Okay. Uh, light microscope is different. Um, it's just light, right? It's not gonna kill the organisms. So you can definitely uh, see living cells. Uh, for example, in the biology lab, we often look at protozoans under a light microscope. It's really cool because they're moving uh, and they're you know, turning and they're moving all those little cilia, but you can't really do that. Uh, using an electron microscope. There are two types of electron microscopes, transmission and scanning. And there's a big difference between those two. I have some um, images here on this slide so you can see the differences. If I just give you text like this, it, you can't really visualize what they're like in your mind, right? So it really helps to look at some pictures so that you can remember those names a little bit better. So these are images of pollen. And this is what pollen grains look like under a light microscope. Um, there are not that many details, right? You just see these circular structures. You know, there are pollen, but and you can't really see what's inside, right? There appear to be some granules, but eh, you can't get all the details. But look at pollen under electron microscopes. Really, really cool, right? Uh, under the scanning electron, which gives you uh, the surface details. You can't see inside of the structure, but you can see what's on the surface. So you can see all these little spikes, right? That's really detailed. So that's scanning electron microscope. Transmission, based on the name, the electrons can go through the uh, specimen and you can see the internal structures. You know, right now you def you're definitely looking at the inside of a pollen grain.
that's the images that you can expect from the different kinds of microscopes. Okay, now let's do some practice questions. Which of the following microscopes would be appropriate to study the virus that causes hepatitis? Now, the correct answer is D, right? Electron microscopes, because these microscopes can give you higher magnification and resolution so that you can see tiny structures as small as a virus. The other three, remember, even though their names are really hard to remember, they are some kind type of a light microscope, right? Light microscopes are not good enough to look at viruses. So the answer is D. Next question. This is a similar to the previous question, but I changed the span span from viruses to mitochondria. So this requires very high resolution, magnification, and which one would you use? Again, the answer is D, right? The other three are light microscopes that they can't really get down to the level of cell organelles. So you have to use electron microscopes. One more question. Communicable diseases can be spread by which of the following transmission? Select all that apply. Is it A, droplets discharged by a sick person through talking, coughing, or sneezing? Definitely. What about B, touching common surfaces? Yes, you can pick up the viruses or bacteria. C, contact with the body fluid? Yes. D, transmission from mother to fetus? That's also possible. I didn't mention that on the previous slide, so I include it here in the question so you're aware of it. Although ATI doesn't mention this in the T-study manual, so this is less likely to appear on the test than other options. Last one, transmission by insects. Yes, that is definitely a possible way to spread a disease. All right, guys, that's the end of the microorganism lesson. Uh, I hope that this is a helpful and definitely feel free to subscribe, like the video, or leave me a comment. I really enjoy reading everyone's comment. It's very encouraging, and I really appreciate you doing that. Thank you, guys. I will see you next time.